Hi, I'm Allison Hagendorf, and welcome to Bottle Rock Backstage with Butter. I am here with the living legend, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> I see you've been hitting the wine. I know, sorry. I'm sorry. Guilty is charged. Guilty is charged. I have been here a long time today. You are my last interview of the day, Billy. First of all, well, drink up. Let's go. Come on. Last night's show at the Jam Cellars ah, Ballroom. Yeah. Were you there? Well, of course I was there. Oh. I have seen you now three times in six months. Tonight will be the fourth. That's a, that's good, right? You're not impressed. No, I'm impressed. <laughs> a woman of your accomplishment and uh, an opportunity. I mean, that's that's you could you could go anywhere. Well, I'm a huge fan, and I will also tell you that everyone I've interviewed today has been a lot. I ask, who are you looking forward to? And every single artist had said the Smashing Pumpkins. Well, that's very. Does kind. that make you feel good? Nothing makes me feel good, but. <laughs> But you know what made me feel good is seeing, seeing Starla kick off last night's set. Yes, we went a little old school last night. Um, Starla Rocket, some, some oh, vintage, Starla some vintage Rocket SP, was, yeah. I posted a clip of you doing your incredible guitar solo from Starla, and I always talk about this, that a lot of people don't realize the virtuoso that you are. Well, I don't know about virtuoso, but... Um, I started off being a, I wanted to be like Yngwie Malmsteen and Randy Rhodes, so I was a shredder right. for the first few years. And then I didn't really want to be a singer. I ended up being a singer. Some people would say, I'm still not a singer. But um, I, I, I got kind of lured into it by songwriting and sort of the opportunity of trying to figure out how to make a band mean something. And songwriting was the way that I figured out. So the guitar playing kind of got pushed aside. And then when the Pumpkins started putting out records and we had solos and stuff, yeah. everybody just assumed that I wasn't the guy playing all the right. solos because, you know, it's like a two two guitar band. Usually the singer doesn't play the leads. Right. So even to this day, people are surprised that I did, you know, that all that crazy guitar right. work. So when they see us live, I think they're kind of yes. like, oh, wow. Oh, oh OK. Duh. When I posted the video of you from last night, people were like losing their minds. Most people knew that you shred, but a lot of people were like, I didn't know that he can shred like that. Yeah. So well, my father cool. was a guitar player yeah. and um, a really good guitar player, better guitar player than I was or am. And uh, so the standard when I started playing was so high. It wasn't like, oh, just play and you're indie good. Like you had to be really, really good in my house. So yeah, there was no, I had no choice. And my father would kind of walk past the bedroom kind of make a face if I was playing poorly, you know? So that, that had a lot to do with uh, the way I play. What about playing festivals? Because obviously you've played in every kind of, like last done night was an intimate club. Done them all. Of, what's, what's different about playing a festival? Well, when I was young, I hated it because, you know, you got treated poorly and festivals back then were not as organized as they are now. And, you know, we'd be on at three o'clock with the sun in our eyes and, you know, it just wasn't my rock dream. Now you have the every advantage of modern organization uh, festivals have certainly evolved, particularly in America, over the last 25 years. So um, what you really now appreciate, or at least I do, is that it's a cultural moment. It's sort of a way of saying, here's a snapshot of America 2023. Yeah. And if you look at the bill, you know, Post Malone, Pumpkins, you know, it's like, it kind of makes sense. It's like there's room for everybody to be successful in their own way. Post Malone, obviously a huge star and a pop star, if that's even a fair way to put it. It's funny to call him a pop star. He doesn't look like a pop star. Okay. Um, but I, a lot of people always said I didn't look like a rock star. But Pumpkins are successful in our own way by doing it a completely different way. And I think that's what's kind of cool about a festival. It gives uh, different fans an opportunity maybe to sample other music that's culturally relevant without necessarily having to make a choice. Yes. Because most times in music, you almost feel like you got to make a choice. Right. Another cool thing is that Autumn is being not just so well received, but people are loving the new music. And when you're playing it live, I'm sure you can see it because the reaction is just so engaged. Yeah, it certainly helps to play a song that's in the charts um, <laughs> as opposed to one that isn't in the charts and no one knows what you're playing. Um, feels good. I don't know. A lot of journalists have sort of encouraged me to sort of take like a victory lap, you know, mm -hmm. sort of thump my chest to say, say I told you so. I don't, I don't really feel that. I feel like, you know, it's been good times and bad times. And now it's just a good time and I'm happy it's a good time. But it's hard sometimes because the world is in such a kind of complicated place. Right. It doesn't feel like anything is simple. So even a good time still feels like, I'm not saying there's an asterisk next to it. I'm saying it's like hard because rock is so about fantasy and the moment. 
you know, whether it's Motley Crue in 82 on the Sunset Strip or something, it's about a moment mm -hmm. and capturing that moment. You seeing us last night, it's about capturing a moment. There's 35 years of the band history on stage in a small club and it's like, there it is. And you can, you can smell the 90s and you can see yeah. where the band is today. But then you walk out the door and it's like you're, you know, through your phone, you're assaulted. Like, did you see the latest outrage and the thing and blah, blah, yeah, blah, and the war. Yeah, and yep. so it's hard sometimes to sort of have that separation and particularly us as uh, parents of small children, you know, you're sort of constantly always battling, you know, once one foot in fantasy world and one foot in reality. If you can achieve that balance, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm always mindful that there are a lot of people struggling. And yep, so yep. Um, maybe that's why it doesn't feel great for me to run around and sort of thump my chest I'm sort of more mindful there's a lot of people out there that are hurting especially post pandemic a lot of children yes. uh, young people sorry it's mm -hmm. probably a better way to put it <laughs> um, so I don't know I'm trying no. to put all those pieces together no, in you're, my way. You're, you're beautifully empathetic I understand the I'm compassion. a Pisces it's, yes. it's, the way, it's the way we roll yes are your children here? No, they're not. Um, no. Um, my son had his first baseball game the other day. Oh, it's such so a big deal. I, I missed it. And uh, he's playing for the Cardinals. And, you know, if you know anything about the Cubs, that's our yep. most hated team. Yep. So it's hard to watch my yes. son wearing a Cardinal red. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure that is hard, especially because your family is such a huge part of your life. They always come to your shows. Or, oh, you guys are always together well, as they, a unit. Well, it's probably against some law somewhere, but they're required to work when they're on tour with me. <laughs> they have to actually go on stage and dance. They have no choice. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I love them to be around things like this, but it's hard. Like this was, we were all in home and then jump on a plane, come yeah, play a couple a, days yeah. and then go right back. And it's very disruptive when you have small kids, you know, it's For like sure. child care and all that stuff. So they'll come on the summer tour with oh, the pumpkins good. this year. They'll be on the World is a Vampire tour. There's oh, your plug. Yeah. Um, but they'll be on the bus and uh, th that's fun times because they get really used to the Yes. You know, the, the vibe of tour. They're know. so cool. Like, even just seeing them hang backstage, they're like, we got this. Well, they belong. But this is their life. But they've grown up in that. Yes. I remember uh, when my son was still in his crib. So that would have been about five years ago. We were playing uh, uh, the Staples Center or the Forum, sorry, in yeah. L.A. Sold out show, big show. And there's my son in the crib throwing toys, you know. Aww. And I'm like, this is the contrast of your totally life now. Totally the juxtaposition. Like, you're warming up and... Uh, there go the toys yeah. uh, but Billy we are grateful for you Thank we're excited you. for I'm the set to tonight you. the show last night was so special I mean everyone is feeling every note every moment it was a special night thank so you. thank you as always well now see now you've you've lifted the bar so high now I know uh. <laughs> you're like my father you've you've created a dynamic I can't escape from now I must excel well let's it's it's Northern California right so right, what do we right. know a lot of people are gonna be stoned right Lots of um, wine. And they're very concerned about plastics. That's true. So I have to integrate that into my- Sustainability is key. <laughs> you got me. You beat me in my own every joke. Time, every you beat time, me in me on my own joke. Yeah. It's so good. The Allison and Billy show up next. Thank Stay you. tuned. Thank you, Butter. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.